Yes, so uh, today's topic will be emotions and uh, well from a scientific point of view emotions they they have only been been around for for a not so many years actually, but uh, I mean in literature and in uh, in our everyday life, we we know that emotions they uh, they appear and can be the cause of a lot of uh, great things or less great things. So even in uh, in some of the most ancient uh, literary works, uh, as this uh, Homer's The Iliad, we know that uh, Achilles' wrath it was uh, part of why uh, this story started. However. Um, it's actually Charles Darwin who was uh, one of the first um, scientists to actually look uh, at emotions in a more scientific way. And then uh, after he published um, his, uh, his now famous books on, um, on, the, on evolution, he, he also published some books on uh, expressions of emotions in man and animals. And, uh, what he tried in those books was to make uh, sort of statement, statements on, on how you can actually identify emotions in, uh, in humans by looking at their facial expressions. And uh, he, they actually came up with a number of, of ways that you could actually identify different types of emotions by the way that you make facial expressions. And um, he came up with this solution, number of, of, uh, of possible um, ways that you could uh, differentiate between different emotions. I'll not go through them now, right now, but uh, just give you an impression on how, how the topic of emotion was actually dealt with in, back in the in late 19th century. Um, so part of the book is actually a, a collection of images like these where uh, Babies, in this case, and also adult, adults, uh, they express different types of emotions. And uh, some of the works, they, they actually date back to even previous works where um, a French um, scientist, he tried to actually stimulate different facial muscles in order to evoke <coughs> facial expressions that should uh, resemble emotions. So he put... Uh, electricity to, to different facial muscles and took pictures of these uh, emotional or uh, artificially in, induced emotional facial expressions in order to differentiate between them. So by stimulating specific facial muscles, he, they believed that you were able to, to differentiate mu uh, emotions. So a lot of, of the book is also these uh, different types of gestures that could um, lead you to a way of, of actually uh, differentiating between emotions and of course this is some of the foundations of why we do emotional uh, studies today. He also tried to look at, uh, at other species and see how they express the emotions and, um, and actually try to combine um, their emotional facial expressions to s across species and actually to find out whether there were uh, common signs of uh, distinct emotional expressions across species. So this is the trying to, to illustrate the similarities between uh, the dog and, and the swan and a human in a case with anger and aggression. So uh, um, you may say a bit uh, naive uh, way of uh, approaching the whole business of emotions, but at least trying to, to make sort of a solid statement on how emotions can be expressed. Later on, in, uh, in uh, actually around 19, uh, 1890, uh, the American psychologist James Lang and no James uh, William J. Sorry, I can't remember his first name. Yeah, and um, and and the Danish psychologist Carl Lange, they proposed a theory um, independently of each other, suggesting that emotions they were actually not. Um, something that, that arose because you had a certain um, emotional state of the brain, but actually in the case of the bear here, you actually become afraid of the bear because you start to run and not the other ways that you start to run because you're afraid. And uh, this was a great debate in, uh, in the early 20th century. And uh, later it was criticized by Cannon and Barth, this theory that, okay, there are a lot of cases where you might not uh, elicit certain types of emotions just by running, so it doesn't really all the, <coughs> all the times make sense that uh, you first have the physical and bodily expression that then leads to an emotional state. 
Um, so this has been an ongoing debate uh, back and forth and actually very recently um, another very similar hypothesis was uh, was proposed by Antonio Damasio called the somatic marker hypothesis, where a similar idea that it was because of these um, elevated blood pressure, elevated um, blushing, uh, that, that you, be, you actually got the emotional uh, states that, that you had. Um, so later on, um, the, one of the first to actually suggest some neural correlates of uh, how emotional expressions are, um, <coughs> are taking place was Pappas. So back in 1937, he uh, proposed a theory that was originating around the limbic system and a lot of the work today is actually also um, suggesting that the limbic system is, is highly important in, uh, the, in the, the the way that, that you actually express emotions in, in humans. So it goes through the thalamus and the sensory cortex, so, um, and you can actually see here the, the circuitry that, that you have, that it goes to the singular cortex, and uh, that will then elicit feelings, so more uh, conscious-like feelings of an emotional state. <coughs> and then through the hypothalamus, there should be some bodily responses, for instance, the more autonomous uh, bodily responses that, le that follows uh, these emotional states, or on the other hand, some may suggest that it's the other way around. So that's these bodily responses lead to the emotional states, still ongoing debate. And um, he put a lot of em emphasis on, on this circuitry between the hypothalamus, the, the thalamus, and the singular cortex and hippocampus in the expression of emotions. Um, later on, Kluver and Bouchy, they uh, described some, uh, some studies where they had actually removed the temporal lobe of uh, patients and uh, found out that they, after the more or less complete removal of the temporal lobe, <coughs> had uh, emotional reactivity, meaning that they didn't really respond as much to emotional stimuli as normally. Um, they had very exploratory behavior, so they tried to um, st study uh, sensory stimuli also with their mouth, and uh, they had hypersexuality. They tried to, um, they eat, ate very strangely. Some of them actually ate their own um, feces, so that was a way that they could actually s uh, suggest that there was something uh, wrong with these patients, and especially these. Uh, <laughs> emotional reactivity suggested that there was an importance of the temporal lobe in um, emotional expressions. <coughs> Later on, McLean, he was also, um, he was actually suggesting this limbic theory, um, so I'm calling it a limbic theory, so the others were, um, the previous one were, were the, the Pappas circuit was just um, looking at similar circuitry as, as this now called the limbic theory by Maclean. And this has actually led to, to what we <laughs> today believe are some of the core and more extended regions of um, emotional processing in the brain. So in red here we have the parts of the brain that are highly involved in um, emotional processing, whereas the yellow ones, they are um, related in some sense. What we see here is that the, um, some of the key regions that we look at is the amygdala, and uh, that's actually quite interesting because it might be that uh, what they did when in the, the Kluver and Boucher studies when they um, removed the temporal lobe was that they also um, disrupted part of the, the amygdala, and that could also lead to uh, some of the deficits that, that they saw. So, um, <coughs> so the whole focus of the temporal lo lobe as a single region for emotional processing actually began to be shrunken a bit and, and late now today we, we know that at, the, at least the amygdala is highly important. Also the hypothalamus and then also cortical regions such as the orbitofrontal cortex um, and the anterior cingulate cortex. So again in the cingulate um, gyrus here. Um, then we have these extended uh, regions that are involved in emotional processing, including the posterior cingulate and also somatosensory cortex, temporal lobe over uh, the temporal pole, 
and um, all of the superior temporal sulcus, but also some of the brainstem nuclei <coughs> and the ventral tegmental area. Um, so these seem to be involved in emotional processes.